My wife and I have been redesigning our bedroom, and one of the things that we wanted was a one-of-a-kind custom headboard. So a couple months ago, when we came up with this idea, I started brainstorming how I would actually pull that off. So, from concept in my brain to something that lives in the real world, this is the process of how I did it. I started this project like I start most others, by putting pencil to paper. The first sketch isn't exact, it's merely to get the idea out of my head so I can visualize it. After getting a rough idea, I started thinking about overall dimensions, what materials I was going to use, and what limitations I would come across along the way. In this case, I knew that my CNC bed, which is 33 inches by 33 inches, was going to impact the overall dimensions of the headboard. Also being a headboard on a king size bed, I needed to know the width of the bed, which, come to find out, was 76 inches. Ultimately, this is the information that decided the overall dimensions of 30 inches tall by 84 inches wide. After this, I started designing in a program called Fusion 360, which is a CAD CAM software. I refined the design and dimensions as I went until I got something that I liked, and let's be honest, something that my wife approved of also. Once I had the design 100% finished, I divided the headboard into three 28-inch sections. This way, I could fit it on my CNC bed comfortably. With my three parts, I moved to the CAM portion of Fusion 360. This is where I set up and generated the tool paths for my CNC router to cut. That is a really quick overview of the design work. If if you have any questions about the design work, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, so I've got everything set up. I'm ready to do my first test. I spent a lot of time designing this, so I'm hopeful that everything will go well, but I really want to do a test to learn what I have to tweak. I'm kind of expecting that I'm going to have to tweak some things. One thing that I know is I'm going to be using a quarter inch down cut bit. So the down cut bit is going to be pushing all the fibers and ejecting everything that it cuts downward. What that does, it'll leave me a nice, smooth top surface. And since I am cutting all the way through, the back will be a little rough, but I'll just clean it up with a, with a sanding block and it won't be that big of a deal. But my desired front surface is really the point here. I could use a compression bit, but rather than deal with it, I wanna guarantee that I have a nice, smooth front surface because that's what we're gonna see. Everything else is gonna be hidden. So let's see what else we learn here. I let it go. I shut it down about halfway through the tool path. For some reason, it, uh, which I'll have to specify this in Fusion, but I didn't catch that it did like three of the circles first and then it did the outside contour path. And so even though I have tabs on these ends here, it still cut it loose without getting all the circles cut. So I wanted to cut the circles first and then come back lastly and do this. And maybe I need to add a few more tabs along the end. Other than that, it cut through really well. I did quarter inch depth of cut. So this is half inch material, which is like 0.47 or something like that. So we did it in two passes, which the Shapeo Go Pro handles that really well. Cutting that in 100 inches per minute at 0.25 inches per cut. So I'm gonna go make that change. Other than the issue that I told you about, I think everything is gonna turn out good. I think I learned everything I need to. All right, so for this project, I'm gonna be using this half inch material. I just got this from my local home store. Not cheap these days. I paid 260 bucks for three half inch four by eight sheets. But that was with tax, so I've got that going for me. Anyways, this is a high grade birched veneered plywood. So we needed something that was higher grade because I'm gonna stain it. So if I was gonna paint it, I could pay a lot less well, a, a lot less uh, for plywood because it's gonna be covered. But here I wanted something where the grain looks good, it's gonna take a stain well. So that's why I went with this pretty plywood. All right, so I got all my cut marks laid out and it hit me. Why don't I cut all three of my sheets at the same time only having to lay out and mark one of them? So instead of cutting just one sheet at a time, I'm gonna cut all three of them at the same time. One thing that I did here, I left two inches on each side it's bigger than what my end product's gonna be. So rather than cut these to the exact size and then use the CNC to cut out the circles and not cut the outside, I'm gonna have the CNC cut the outside. That's for a couple reasons. One, it'll make sure every one of them is exactly consistent and it eliminates the need to line them up perfectly every single time. So if I was to cut them myself and even if they were all exactly the same size, if I laid them out an eighth of an inch off, it's gonna be, my holes aren't gonna line up. They're gonna be an eighth of an inch off. So it's gonna take a little bit more machining time and I'm gonna have to mess with tabs a little bit. 
but I would rather do that and have a greater end product. So that's what I'm gonna do for this. All right, so I'm gonna be using these screws. They're actually Craig pocket hole screws. <laughs> it's the only inch screw that I've got that has a decent top on it. So it's gonna be in each corner. Now the way I set this up when I was talking about earlier with the two inches in each direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure up an inch and then I'm gonna measure an inch in and that's gonna be my zero point. So I'm gonna to zero to right there. So my file, the XYZ that you saw on the computer is gonna start right there. It's not gonna start out here because I'm gonna have these screws here. So the screws will be within that inch zone so they won't get hit. The other reason for this is the use of tabs. And so I wanna, obviously I can't, like I was saying earlier, I can't cut all the way through the to the edge because then it'll break loose like it did on my test. All this is to get the perfect pieces. I've got nine of them to cut. I'm a little worried about going nine for nine. There's probably gonna be a mistake somewhere, but let's see, let's see if we can go nine for nine and cut out these panels and not have anything bad happen or, or I forget to do something. So let's see how this goes. All right, so I've got all the pieces almost cut out. I went eight for nine. So I can only get three blanks of these out of each piece of plywood. I bought three pieces of plywood. So I got to the uh, eighth of nine. I was cruising along, feeling good. Cut all these out, cut all these pieces out. I was doing the outside contour tool path. It got to the back corner and somehow my dust hose, the bungee cord fell off and it got hooked around my Z axis and lost some steps and anyways it cut the corner short as you can see right here not savable and that meant i had to go get some more plywood anyways this is what i needed so i'll cut this last one and that will be the ninth of nine pieces and we'll be ready to rock and roll all right i'm cutting this third layer just the center piece in a couple different pieces so you can see how since the way i designed it this third layer is open down here so there is no bars going across. That's just on the first and second layer. So there's nothing right here connecting these two pieces. So from this point to this point is its own individual piece. It's gonna be this, this thickness. So I'm just gonna make that on the table saw. So I'm gonna make one on the top and bottom and then that will complete the look the way I have it designed. This is so cool. To go from concept in the brain to some sketches, lines, and boom. We've got this piece of art. I don't know what else to call it. But this headboard is going to look really cool in our bedroom. And the next step, so CNC is all done. We've got all nine pieces here. And the next step is to stain them. So remember, that's why we went with a nice looking face for plywood. Because there are a lot cheaper plywoods out there. But since it's going to be a transparent stain, you're going to see this wood grain. It's going to pull it out. What we're going to do is we're going to go from light to dark it's going to kind of ha have this ombre effect from light uh, and then the backer board which we have not added yet just going to be an eighth inch piece of ply is going to be the darkest the face is going to be natural wood that's going to be the darkest i think that's going to look really cool i have to experiment with some stain and mixing them to get kind of a gradual color we'll start with a lighter stain and then probably add black to it to make it darker all right so i've already started testing out the stains and what color I want the layers to be. My wife will be proud of me. I went and changed my shirt so I don't get stained all over my nice clothes. Hey, one point for me. I've got a couple different color stains here. I've got early American right here. This is early American. The pre-stain I use basically reduces the, the blotchiness and 
the color is more even. It does change the color of the stain, so that's important to remember. So I did the same thing here with the dark walnut stain. This is no pre-stain and this is uh, stain. So what I've come to here is the front face is gonna be the lightest. I'm just gonna use a clear coat finish on the front. It's just gonna be natural wood. The second layer is gonna be a little bit darker. I'm probably gonna go with this early American. The third layer is gonna be a, even a little more darker and then the fourth layer the backer board that I'm gonna attach all these things together with is gonna be the darkest. Okay, so I've got layer two up here now. I'm going to apply this pre-stain like I talked about earlier to the whole surface, let it dry, and then I'll apply the early American color to it. All right, so I let that soak in for about five minutes and looks like I need to wipe off a couple spots that have any excess that it's not gonna soak in at this point. And then I'm able to start applying the stain. All right, all the pieces are dry and laid together. Just to see the different colors, um, I haven't attached anything yet. One thing that I changed is I was gonna use an eighth inch plywood as the backer board. The eighth inch plywood that I have isn't long enough. So I'm gonna use the cutoffs from the plywood when I cut them down to size, and that way I have less waste. The only problem is it's gonna be done in two pieces here and which isn't a big deal you won't be able to see it really and i will stagger them so they're even so while the stain is drying on those back panels i turn my attention to the frame that's going to kind of uh, frame out this whole piece i decided to use two by fours for this i'm going to mill them down i'm going to cut the rounded edge over and the reason i decided to go with two by fours is it's the cheapest solid wood that I can stain and it just makes sense. So we're really close to the end of construction of this project and then we'll just have to install which will be a whole nother process in itself. But let's finish up this frame, get all the stain, get it to dry and we will assemble this piece. Okay what I decided on to assemble all this together, got all these pieces here, is to use some wood glue, light wood glue, and some CA glue which is basically like super glue, and some accelerator which makes it bond almost instantly. The CA glue will hold it in place while the wood glue is drying and I think that is the best way to assemble. Alright everything is glued up in place. I have a little bit of unevenness here on the edge. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flush trim bit on my router, I'll show you how it's gonna work here, and just to trim everything flush, and that way I can put on this border. And then one thing I'm gonna do, just to reassure everything, I'm gonna flip it over now that I have everything in place and glued, and I'm gonna run some screws in from the back. I just wanna make sure everything stays nice and tight and in place. So I'll use a couple fasteners just to ensure that that happens. All right, so we're up here in the final destination where it's going to be installed. For installation on the wall, I'm gonna be using these hanging brackets. I'm using two of them and they hold 100 pounds a piece. This thing is under 100 pounds, so this is gonna be plenty. So we need to make sure we do two things up here at installation. One, I wanna make sure that at least one screw across that bracket is in a stud. And then the other ones are gonna be in drywall anchors. The second thing we need to do is make sure it's centered on the wall. So in order to do this, what we did was we located studs on each side in the rough area where um, these brackets are gonna be. And then we found the center of the wall and we measured two of those studs from the center of the wall. Once we had those measurements, we took those and put those on the back of our headboard and basically just transcribe them over to the headboard. Then we'll install the brackets, and if we did everything correctly, we should be able to hang this thing on the wall, and which with a few adjustments, be able to slide it back and forth and center it up on the bed. This was the largest CNC project I've ever tackled, from design concept in my head to reality, actual real world thing. So I hope that this process showed you that you can take an idea from your head and model it in 3D, cut it out in the CNC, and boom. It's, it's hard to believe that that idea was in my head and now it's our headboard. If you enjoyed seeing the process of this build video, check this one out right here because I think you'll enjoy that one too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.